the next one is around like definitely on the storage side how you need to ensure that you have ample storage um, uh, available that the free space available on the server right to store your logs file uh, maybe if you are using uh, like a uh, for the file storage, if you're using like your file system instead of database, definitely ensuring that you have like ample of uh, a space available for storing all your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, transaction related files as well. So one of the common, if it is a Unix box, like one of the command that you can use is called df space minus g. If you run that, okay, typically if you see over here, it gives you uh, the, the amount that has been allocated to uh, that uh, file system, right? And then like how much is available? Like you need to ensure that like it, 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 you have enough space, right? So on a day to do you need to check the uh, the storage space availability, right? And also like this is the the top one is on the uh, application server, right? You you have a, a database server, right? Which which is also connected to the application. So definitely uh, making sure that you are pinging from the application server to the database server. So uh, and then see if it, the database server is responding or not, right? That's kind of the second. So you use ping command for doing a a check that the data ser database servers are up and running and it is responding to the application server, right? The next one is around. Um, more more of related to the uh, different kind of uh, tables uh, which are which are uh, the most critical they are like almost like i uh, if i am not wrong okay there is the tables right uh, out there uh, behind the sterling integrated application there are more than 500 right but not everyone is important right for from administrator standpoint okay definitely there are few key uh, tables that you need to uh, ensure that you are uh, checking them regularly to ensure that uh the num the number of rows right within those uh tables are not uh like increasing uh, uh and then like uh, uh basically ensuring right that they're not only increasing but definitely they're kind of uh, maintaining a stable uh, uh number of rows right you need to ensure like and how do you do that like definitely you need to ensure that the purge process is running properly right typically if the purge processes are not running properly if uh, your archival process is not running properly you would run into a scenario where your database size will keep on growing your table size are growing continuously and it will negatively impact your application your uh, application might be slow your dashboard okay will take a lot of time to log like to to kind of like let you in when you log in so those are some of the issues okay and database is very critical for uh, uh, an application like sterling b2b integrator it is a oltp application so uh, every uh, second okay we are having inserts updates deletes okay that is being fired from the application to the database table so ensuring uh, you have some kind of notification maybe on a daily basis like i've just given an example when i was working as an administrator i uh, set up everything okay or that i used to get this kind of report on my email which will tell me that on this particular day uh, these are the tables that i want to track right and what is the number of rows within those tables? And if I see any kind of discrepancy, like let's say uh, today I see like uh, like uh, as per like the maybe the benchmark is like every day maybe the data table is around having like maybe 50k uh, records, right? And suddenly one day I see like it went to 100k, right? Definitely there is something wrong. Like I need to check whether there like we really received a lot of files for a particular day, right? Or is this something that the archive process is not running properly? Things like that, right? So I'm just giving an example. So data table correlation set, MBX message, which is basically the mailbox related messages, workflow context, which holds the uh, the steps right for each and every business process, a document table, right, which holds the, the metadata of the document uh, and also the the link to the uh, physical document if it is a file storage right that you have selected instead of database archive info uh, document lifespan trans data which holds the blob data right uh, and document extensions so these are some of the tables that you would like to track them on it on a daily basis right uh, these are a few more uh, uh, notifications that I used to uh, I, I I had set up when I was an administrator. Like uh, uh, if you see the top one, which is like uh, associate BP, like uh, that's kind of like associate BP in the in respect to like what happens is that uh, when you receive a, a mailbox message, right? Like let's say you have a SFTP client, 
uh, which your trading partner is using, and they're uploading some files uh, uh, and uh, through SFTP server, which is hosted within SF, like your Sterling integrated application, and then like the mailbox message comes in and gets dropped in. Uh, typically, if there is a business process that gets kicked off or, uh, from that uh, bootstrapped uh, mailbox message that uh, was uh, that that actually landed, uh, there are certain business processes, okay, which gets triggered in that way. Uh, you won't have like uh, what do you call uh, a business process ID attached to that uh, first. Uh, process that, that kicks off and then what happens is that all the mailbox messages okay uh, typically there's a process called associate BPs to doc uh, what it does is that it actually uh, runs every day like there's a frequency I think it's uh, like every 40 minutes or something uh, but uh, what it does is that whatever business processes right okay uh, like whatever documents comes in and there is no business process attached to that it goes and it associates a bp of uh, bp id to the document okay to that mailbox document for example in this case so that it is marked uh, with a BP ID so that the index process, okay, which goes in and then indexes that uh, uh, document so that after the expiry of the uh, document, okay, it should be picked up by the purge process or the archive process for 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 uh, them to run right and then clean up those mailbox messages if this process is not running properly typically if you have a lot of mailbox messages that comes in you might run into scenario where your mbx message table your data table right those will keep on growing and you will see oh, like even uh, beyond 30 days like you might see files okay uh, which are there in mailbox okay they are not getting cleaned up typically uh, if you receive a file in a mail box they get a 10 years lifespan right uh, by default but this associate bps to dog okay it runs and makes sure that they are getting the right set of pods uh, like policies like 30 days uh, 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 expiry date so that they get cleaned up and they get re-indexed to a 30 days other than like 10 years lifespan so definitely it's very critical the the next one, if you see, this is more of the transaction table uh, count on the Sterling file gateway. So these are some of the table. If it starts with FG underscore, which means file gateway underscore arrived file, file gateway underscore. So this is only relevant uh, if you have Sterling file gateway running within your uh, application on top of Sterling integrators. So these are some of the tables you would like to keep a track of. These are the top 10 tables in respect to size. You need to check ensure that the size of those tables are not dramatically or drastically uh, increasing. And you also are ensuring what is the total database size and all that. So these are some of the tables uh, kind of attached uh, previously as well, right? So you need to get the table size as well, not only the record counts, uh, which was there in the previous slide, right? Some of the weekly activities. The best practice is definitely have some kind of regular cadence in respect to uh, restarting or recycling the Sterling B2B integrator application. So um, you can do it bi-weekly, you can do it weekly based on the volume of data that you are uh, uh, processing through your uh, uh, Sterling integrator. So, and these are some of the, the shutdown instructions, right? Uh, uh, hard stop, right? And then uh, you can do a ls minus LTR uh, start.pid to see the processes have been uh, uh, killed, right? Okay, and no longer there. Then, uh, if not, okay, then you use the kill minus nine and then the PID of that uh, uh, process of the Sterling integrator process, right? And then kill it and then uh, uh, ensure that everything is uh, kind of terminated properly and then you uh, initiate a startup, right? Uh, 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 instructions like dot slash run dot sh restart, right? For the containers, okay, once the, the new app uh, server, the actual app like node one or node two comes up, okay, you basically initiate the container uh, startup, right? If you have containers running uh, uh, within, within your application, right? Uh, and then also like, check that the logs are getting generated right and i've given some of the logs location where you want to see so this is uh, specific to the project that i was working in but it might differ the 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 folders might differ differently but just giving a high level of 
what are the processes okay involved in like uh, recycling your uh, server and then like let's say if you have external pods instead of internal pods which runs in a separate jvm definitely ensuring that uh, uh, ensure that uh, steps are taken right to terminate that process also separately right um, and then like uh, starting that external pods back up right uh, and then uh, once you have done all the uh, node one node two adapter container startup uh, you can go back into that same uh, 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 troubleshooter, system troubleshooter, host information to see that uh, they have come up and running, right? And uh, uh, they are all active status, right? So you can check that way. And then uh, I've given the the commands over here. If you see, how do you want to uh, start the uh, external pause? How do you want to stop the external pause? Typically, you cannot run both simultaneously. Definitely, uh, if you want to run external pause, you need to stop the internal pause. Where do you go and how do you stop it? Typically, that's under the deployment schedules, and you have a Perl service. You can search for that, and then definitely uh, uncheck the enable status so that way uh, the internal purge will stop and then you start the external purge right and then what what is the log location of that external purge okay i've given that as well over here uh, from a performance tuning point of view definitely this is something i would recommend that you check on a weekly basis to ensure that your uh, uh, si is uh, functioning smoothly right so how do you do that you go into system performance tuning uh, uh, and then uh, you click on view performance configuration. This is where you would like to look into the parameters like the overall memory allocated for the Sterling integrator application, how much memory is allocated to the SI engine and then the adapter containers, what's the heap size and all that. If you want to go into more detail, you can look into the documentation of Sterling integrator. You have all this information what uh, and then uh, Definitely checking about the the total number of threads that are available, the queue configuration, mean max threads per queue, uh, the DB connection pools, whether you are you are hitting the 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 max uh, pool that has been allocated to each of those uh, 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 queues, right? So definitely ensuring those things and reviewing them uh, those configuration and satisfy on a weekly basis, addressing any concerns if it is right, and also definitely uh, working with closely with your infrastructure team, right? If you need any help from like either the unix team or the networking team security team things like that and bringing them to closure right uh, other than that like if you want to look into the system configuration and resource tests there is one command called amepat that you can run on each server nodes from unix prompt and you would get like this on the left hand side right you would get all the configuration of that specific application server right the system how many uh, cpus uh, logical cpus you have what's the max mean capacity the memory uh, and all that right uh, on the right hand side if you see if you want to do a resource monitoring like the cpu memory paging related uh, uses you can run a command called topaz which will give you a combined monitoring of all your cpu memory and the page space right you need to ensure those are not hitting uh, somewhere like maybe beyond like 80% or 90% frequently, right? So definitely these are some of the uh, uh, commands you have to uh, know uh, and keep it handy, right? For your day-to-day -day, uh, task. Uh, some more uh, commands like nmon, right? Uh, there's another, this is one of the commands which gives you like uh, the, uh, the idle and the user percentage, like how much of your CPU is ideal and how much is being used, right? Uh, definitely ideal should be high uh, and uh, the amount of uh, CPU usage should be low for, a, for a, a, a good performance, right? On the application side, right? Uh, so this is this is one of the other uh, command I, I, I used to use, right? Uh, so just giving some of the snippet of those, uh, how do you use those for the uh, resource monitoring on the memory side of it, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have for today. I hope it was useful for folks who are willing to kind of move from a developer uh, to a pro or a production support to an administrator role, right? Uh, eventually, or maybe like they are wearing multiple hats, like they have been asked to do like both the development, production support, as well as administration parts. So for them, I hope it was useful. Feel free to let me know uh, if you have any feedback or comment for me. Uh, yeah, until then, see you.